welcome welcome we're going to get started in a in a few seconds uh, so if everybody's logging in and joining us uh, welcome to open source summit North America 2020 so let's get started uh, this talk is going to be about Knative and Tecton we'll be uh, creating an application and showing you how to use both um, and this is about a tutorial so just have a, uh, a couple of slides uh, very quickly and then we're just going to go deep into so the open source uh, tutorial uh, that I have with a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, my name is Carlos Santana, I work for IBM. I'm an IBM Cloud Architect and uh, this is my um, Twitter handle, C Santana PR. If you uh, tweet this talk, um, I'll, I can reply back with the slides or the GitHub repo if you're watching the recording uh, afterwards. So with that, um, I'm going to give you uh, a quick overview of what is Knative. Knative is to make developers more productive, basically serverless containers in a way that it can run in Kubernetes and they scale to zero. So that's a big difference between Kubernetes and maybe uh, Autoscaler and maybe the Kubernetes um, Knative Autoscaler and the Kubernetes HPA, Auto Horizontal Autoscaler, uh, it doesn't go to zero. This one goes to zero because it scales on based on HTTP traffic. Uh, it's portable because it works on any version of recent version of Kubernetes, and it's open source. And that's the website, and you can find it. The, you can find all the open source code in GitHub.com Knative. Um, continuing, so that at a very high level, very quickly, uh, we're going to be talking about today about Knative serving. Knative has two components: uh, serving and uh, eventing. Um, so in serving, we have a, a service that we want to provide you sure it's an HTTP service and then it has configuration. So as you change the configuration, this will start creating revisions. Think of it as versions. Um, and then it creates a route. It handles all the tracks, uh, route configuration, including the DNS and also uh, traffic speeding to configure a networking layer like Istio, Contour, Courier. We're going to see that one. Um, Next one is a project Tecton. Tecton is about uh, automation, automation for DevOps and CI/CD. Uh, so it is for build, test, and deploy, similar to Jenkins. It works very well with Jenkins and other uh, um, open source tooling and DevOps. But basically, Tecton was created to be cloud native and in Kubernetes. Uh, that kind of standardized the way we define pipelines and tasks. And as tasks has steps, I'm going to see that a diagram about that. Same thing as Knative uh, is open source, is portal because it works on, on, on Kubernetes, mostly recent versions of Kubernetes, uh, and the, the source code is on GitHub, github.com, Tecton CD. Um, this slide is about Tecton, not Knative. Um, we have uh, steps um, that are composable in, in an order, and then you can put them in a task, um, and then a, if you want to create a pipeline, you'll be creating a set of tasks that can run sequentially or they can run in parallel. And we're going to see an example in the tutorial. I'm going to go over the tutorial very fast, um, but uh, this is the link to the tutorial. And like I said, if you tweet um, to this link, I can give you the link um, or you can copy paste it. Um, and also uh, don't feel that you have to keep up with the pace. This is going to be a very quick and short tutorial just to give you the highlights, uh, but then you can sit down and go over the tutorial once you have your Kubernetes cluster set up and then get uh, a feeling of how to put all these things together. Uh, so with that, let's switch. Um, and this is again, uh, the, the Knative um, to Tecton tutorial that I'm doing. That's on Twitter handle and uh, I work for IBM. So this is uh, cloud.ibm.com. This is where you're going to, you can get a Kubernetes cluster for free. So with that, uh, let's move to the um, tutorial. And for that, let's move to the terminal and open the, the website here. Um, this website is located here. The readme, basically follow the instructions in the readme to um, all the instructions. Mostly it's just copy and pasting into the terminal if you don't want to make typos and things like that. To set up the environment, um, I'm not going to set it up here because that will waste a lot of time, but you have to set up a Kubernetes cluster. I have here information of uh, basically three options, but there could be many. Uh, Knative and Tecton runs on any on a recent version of Kubernetes. 
And um, the one I'm going to use today is the IBM free Kubernetes cluster. You can get a free cluster and you can ask in our booth on how you about more about uh, the $200 credit that you get uh, when you open an account. Uh, but it's, it's free and it has the latest version of Kubernetes. So I'll be using that. Uh, but if you want to try Minikube or Katacoda step-by-step, I also have that. You can check it out there. Uh, well, the, the CLI, we're going to be using the command line interface. So you're familiar with Linux or Unix. Uh, we use the, uh, the Linux interface heavily uh, in this cloud-native uh, development uh, process. So you will need the kubectl, the KN, which is the K-native CLI, and Tekton, and um, an account in Git, uh, some sort of an account in Git, and then a container registry, I'm going to use Docker Hub. I'm not going to show that. You can go step by step and configure that and set up the credentials as environment variables um, that we're going to use uh, later for the container registry. Installing Knative is pretty simple. Um, you grab the, the YAML files. There's also an operator that you can use, but in this case, um, I put here in the tutorial the instructions. You can copy paste this version 15.1 installs the CRDs and the cores. This is standard practice to install uh, software in Kubernetes. Then you install a network, networking layer. This could be Istio, or it could be Courier, Contour, Glue, any, it doesn't have to be Istio. It used to be that it need, only we supported Istio, but then recent version, this is pluggable. So this is a pluggable network interface, network la networking layer that Knative will be programming. So in this case, this is a, a very lightweight, it's called K, uh, Courier. Uh, so you start it with the uh, a YAML file, the same thing will create, the resources will be created in the core system. The Knative will be in Knative serving. Um, in this case, I'm using a free cluster, so I don't have a load balancer or ingress, but we can still play with Kubernetes. Same thing that you would do with something like Minikube and such. Uh, we're going to use, extract the external IP uh, of this cluster that I have already logged in. I already logged in with kubectl, so I run it in kubectl programs. Uh, uh, CLI. Uh, we're going to use nip.io. That's this is a nifty way of getting a, a domain name out of an IP address. Anything uh, below before the nip.io it returns back the IP address. So that's this is a trick uh, that I like to do. And then we're going to configure uh, Kubernetes with that domain name. I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. And then configure courier, which is our ingress to get traffic into our cluster. And I'm going to configure one that is node port on that external IP. I already did it, so I'm not going to show you that. Um, and then you're going to tell Knative to use uh, Courier. So you need to uh, patch the class and give it, like, if it's Istio or it's a Glue, is it uh, Courier, that information. Uh, to validate that everything's running, I can, I can do that and check that my cluster is ready. Uh, running this command, the bots should be running uh, for both Courier and Knative. And then this is the service that I, I created to get traffic into it. Uh, let me check how we're doing with time. Um, so um, next one is, uh, so Knative is already installed. It's out of the way, super easy to install. You can install under three minutes. Uh, for running our first application in Knative, I'm going to, use, I'll be using the, 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 the default namespace. You can use any namespace that you want. But since I'm using that one, that will be part of the domain name. So the, uh, our domain name will be the name uh, the name of the application namespace dot and the domain name that already we already set up with nip.io. So I'm just setting up environment variables so everything works out of the command line. Uh, so I created that, um, and then I'm going to create a our first uh, Knative application. Our service is going to be called hello, and I'm going to use an image that is already available, a sample application, a sample container that is available from the open source project. So let me create that, and and this is a your first uh, K Native um, application. So it's uh, configured and is um, available there, and then you can list it to make sure is uh, ready. So you want to see something like here, ready. And then we can use curl to execute it, right? Um, or you can just access uh, the from the web browser you have available. So this one is a hello world, and it should print that. The nifty thing with it is that once uh, traffic stops uh, uh, on the website or users visiting the website or an API calling it, um, 
there'll be a, a pot running. Uh, if you have more traffic, more pots will come up. But the, the, the trick about uh, Candidate is uh, eventually this, after a, uh, a minute uh, and it's configurable, it will go scale down to uh, zero. So after a, a minute, as you can see, the pods are terminated. If I check uh, for the pods, there's no pods. But check it out. If I go back to the website and I run it again, I will have now a pod running. Um, so it started very quickly and my app is application. So that way you can use your Kubernetes cluster to have a bunch of apps and the ones that are not used, they're scaled to zero, they don't consume CPU and memory. So that's what Knative is about. Um, and some people call these serverless um, or, or scale to zero uh, serverless, so that's pretty cool. So with that, we just finished with our first Hello World. Just wanted to show you how to get started with Knative. And now uh, this next section is around um, updating Knative. So that application returned Hello World. Um, so let me run it again return hello world but what about if i want to uh, update something with it i can use the cli again and run kn service update hello and change the environment variable to hello world v1 so if i run the application again it changed to v1 so that's a way of changing the configuration basically changing the yaml associated uh, or information associated with that service and just change the environment variable if we continue now we're going to go do a, 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 an example that is a little bit complicated, uh, but I think it's pretty cool because this, if all the ways, if you're going to do it in a, a different way, it gets more complicated, but I think this is a, 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 an easier way of, of doing it. Um, so right now our application is running, it says uh, V1, but I want to update it and leave 75% of the traffic to that version and 25% to the new version. So with the Knative CLI, I can specify that I want 75 to the new version and keep 25% of the users to the old version. So I updated the application and then I can I can describe it and then you can see 75% uh, goes to the old version and the new version gets 25%. So now if we uh, run the application back to back, right, we uh, execute a bunch of uh, requests, it will start printing uh, V1 and V2. So you can see about 25% of the requests goes to V2, the rest, the majority goes to V1. And that's a actually a, a very quick way of doing uh, traffic splitting uh, in Kubernetes. Um, and this is, has been a complex way of doing it. So this is where we say that we want to make our developers life easier on running out that. Uh, updates to to the cloud. So in this example, what about if I want to uh, keep 75 percent, 25 percent, but I want a, a new version um, uh, to be out? Uh, in this case, I'm going to dark launch a V3, so no one will get that version. It's going to be dark launch, and it's going to be like the latest version will be zero percent of the traffic. Mm -hmm. So now, if, um, but if, what about if I want to access that because I use a tag? Like I'm using tags v1, v2, v3. This one create me a, a, a URL domain name with v3 dash in front of that my my URL. So if I run that, I can access v3 because I know the URL specific to it. But my users don't know about it. They still continue using uh, uh, v1 and v2. So, but uh, let's say that we're ready to make it into production and make this. I like this application, right? This is the application. This is the version that I want to do. And then he says, hello from Open Source Summit, uh, North America 2020. And we, this is the version that I, we want to uh, put. I can configure it with um, latest. Let's say I want 100% of the traffic to go to this version. And now if we run the application, everything will go to V3. So as you can see, in a couple of minutes, I was able to deploy uh, an application, do traffic splitting between two, uh, dark launch the last one, V3, and then make it available to everyone. So um, that's a, uh, a workflow that you work with Kubernetes and Knative. Um, 
If you want to do this in, in YAML format, and I'm going, to, um, I'm going to show you the YAML, this is a practice that we're going to use later as we use Tekton to deploy the application. So in this case, I, will ca I could define the, the whole application or just the latest information with YAML. So in this case, this is how the YAML will look like. I'm specifying a service, a, uh, a environment variables, the image that I want to use, and then how do I want to uh, shift, shift the traffic. Uh, with other, if you want to do this in a in a different way or how it used to be, before Knative, you have to write a lot of uh, configuration uh, files just to achieve this. So comparing uh, these uh, twenty about twenty lines of code uh, of YAML compared to I don't know sixty on all these resources, uh, that's what Knative does. It orchestrates all the all the things created in Kubernetes for you, and you just give it simple instructions. So I'm not going to show that that example, but you can give it a try when you do the um, demo, um, when you try the tutorial yourself in Minikube or the free cluster in IBM. So that example, we're done with that. Uh, now we want to deploy our application. So if we go back to our application, let me see. Um, so we are done with Knative. Now we're going to do uh, Tecton. So Tecton, remember that I said is for build, deploy, and test. So it's automation for C DevOps and CI/CD. And the most common scenario is that you have source code in Git. Um, and source code could be uh, any language or any program and convert that um, into a package that you can deploy in the cloud native environment, such as Kubernetes. So to install Tecton, um, let me see if I, I don't have Tecton installed, so I'm going to install Tecton. Uh, you copy paste this uh, YAML file, and this should install it in the K, uh, Tecton pipelines um, namespace. And I have some errors, so let me run it again. So I run the command second time and this time it worked. So um, Tecton should be installed. One optional component of Tecton is the dashboard. It's a, it's a web UI. Um, I'm going to install it just to show you uh, how it looks like. So let's install it uh, here and installs in the same uh, namespace as Tecton. And then um, since I'm going to access this as a, as a website, I have to do the same thing of exposing it as a, as a node port. It depends on your cluster if you have a low balancer or ingress. If not, then you can access, I am exposing as a through a node port. And using that external IP address that I've been using for the Knative application, I uh, use it for the dashboard. So I'm going to extract the, the external IP address, the node port, and this should give me a, a URL that I can open here and load the pipeline. So this is, um, you can see the pipelines, pipeline runs, um, and, and follow that. So I'm going to show that in a minute. So we go back and it's, and it's optional. So that was the Tecton dashboard, Tecton pipelines, and if we want to verify that everything's running, we can check that the pods are running. Uh, so the pods are running in that, in that namespace, and then our, our dashboard um, um, with the node board is available. So I know that everything's running and Tecton dashboard is running. So with that out of the way, the same way as Knative, uh, under three minutes you can get uh, Tecton installed, pretty simple to install software in Kubernetes. Uh, and this is one of the, the things that uh, makes a Kubernetes uh, attractive. It's easy to install, easy to deploy, uh, and portable. Uh, so with that already installed the Tecton um, pipelines, I'm going to check on, um, on number five which is uh, building of, of application, which is, I think this is what we wanted to get to in this in this talk. Uh, to configure access, uh, we have to give some access to Kubernetes in terms of we're going to be taking code, creating a container, and pushing it to the uh, container registry. And for that, you have to create a, uh, a secret with your, in this example, I'm going to use Docker Hub. Uh, so my registry, namespace, and password, um, and, and that way, Tecton is going to use that to when it's going to create, containerize your application and push it to a registry. But this could be any registry. Tecton works with, with any registry. Basically, it's not Tecton. It's the utility, such as Canical or Builder, that you're using uh, in your scripts to build a container and push it. So uh, Tecton, basically, just you, you're configuring shell scripts at that point. I'm not going to run it because I already have it. 
uh, what I need to do is create a service account that it has enough permissions to run these utilities and also push um, to to um, to Docker Hub and also create resources uh, such as Knative applications. I wanted to deploy Knative applications. So for that service account, I'm going to give it that those permissions of be able to edit and create Kubernetes resources and creating them, them as roles and role bindings uh, because I, I want to just just work with one namespace. It could be that I could be using a, a shared cluster and I was given access to one namespace. So this is a way of you can configure it only on one namespace and give it enough permissions uh, uh, to the person using it there. So our first task is to build. And like I said before, uh, a task in Tekton is composed of different steps. Um, and uh, a task is something that is going to be reusable. So in this case, um, I have a, a simple Node.js application in in GitHub in this web. Actually, I'm using the same GitHub repo repository. Uh, you can see here it's on the, in a folder called Node.js, and and it's a simple um, application of uh, web uh, web browser web API. Sorry, uh, using using Node.js, but you can use any language you want. Uh, Go, Python, Java, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it gets packaged into a container. Uh, and it's deployed to uh, the container registry. Um, if you want to see how that task looks like, the name of the task will be build. So as you can see, it's a task in Kubernetes uh, resource. It takes a few parameters. For example, the GitHub URL where the source code is, uh, which branch or, or Git hash do you want? And then the image that I want to put, create and push to a container registry. So if you can see down here, the steps is basically two scripts. Uh, this is just standard shell scripting. It could be pro scripting or shell or whatever you want to do. So the first one will do a git clone of the uh, of the source code, um, and the second one is going to use. Um, in this case, I'm using Builda, which is a in, an utility that it takes a source code in a directory and then creates a a container image, and then I'm pushing it uh, with a push command and pushing it to the container registry. So with that, let's create that task. Um, in Kubernetes, so I have my task. Now Tekton has a CLI that I can use for that to list my task. So I should see, um, oh, I'm in the wrong in the wrong uh, folder. So let me move to the repo that I just cloned and I should move it, I should run it here. So uh, run that. Um, actually, I didn't, the other ones uh, failed. So let me go back and create those. Um, Ones. I, I think I already have them, but to double check, uh, let's, let's put them there. Yep. So now I already have one of them, uh, and my task is there. So if I, I want to see the task, let me run uh, Tekton task alas here. And I should see my build task. And if I want to describe it, I can just describe it here. Um, these are the parameters that I'm going to pass to that task the steps that it's going to take, and there's no task runs because I haven't run it yet. Uh, and then to run it, talking about running it, I'm going to run that task by creating a task run resource, but the CLI is kind of nifty because it helps me create that with a command called start. So I'm going to run the command start with the name of the task, the repository that we want to take, the image that we want to generate, and then the folder where like my application is located and the service account. So with all those commands, um, I can create the YAML or I can use the CLI. It doesn't matter how you create the resources in Kubernetes. The CLIs are nifty because that's a way of you can task things quickly. You can develop things quickly. Um, so in this case, I'm using the flag dash dash show log, as you can see here. So basically, this is going to start the task and then follow follow the logs as it's building the container image and then pushing it to uh, the registry. So after a minute, our, uh, our, our image is, is it built. It took uh, my source code from, um, from JavaScript uh, and it's building a container image. This basically is the standard output of when you run uh, an image. And in this case, it's doing the push. So it's pushing this image to Docker Hub. So let me go to Docker Hub or, or the, whatever uh, register you're using. You can be even using the, the one from um, IBM, we have a container registry, which that one is private, secure. We do code scanning and those type of things. 
uh, but in this case, uh, the, the sta is a standard and it's open source. So now I'm here, and as you can see, this image has some tags. Um, if we check uh, the the image, it should be it should be there now. So you just push the image to to this location. Uh, let me see. I think it says a few seconds. Last push a few seconds ago. So that image got pushed to. Uh, Docker Hopper easy like uh, when in one second you can use the CLI to check that it's there uh, But I already did through through the UI so it doesn't matter if it's written 200 But uh, it's a nifty way of checking if you're like programmatically uh, When you work with Tekton we show these people that are doing DevOps and that's um, uh, The automation so that's it. That's a task that takes source code and creates a container and push it to um, to a container registry from Git. So that's the basic concept of, of Tekton. But if we want to take it a little bit further, uh, we want to deploy the application. Why can you be using things like GitOps and doing a, a sync uh, or can kubectl apply it? Uh, or I could use Tekton to run kubectl. In this case, that's the use case I'm going to show. So let's say I want to run kubectl every time somebody pushes to Git um, and I can take the YAML file, which is located in this Git repo um, so this is the, the, the task that does that work. It's called deploy, again, from a uh, YAML perspective. The parameter that it takes is a GitHub repository, similar as the other one. Um, it takes a directory where my YAML files is, what is the name of the YAML file. And in this case, I made a, 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 a tweak to say, if this task takes an image URL or including a specific uh, tag, Go ahead and replace in the YAML file before you uh, install it. And, and this is how I do it with a simple script of checking if you pass in that image. Go ahead and edit the, the YAML file and replace image with the... So I'm, I'm here, this is specific the way the, the Knative do the Knative YAML file and replacing the image URL now with a specific image URL um, and then deploy the application with kubectl apply, which is... Uh, running inside the container. So each step in here is running into its own container. So this is a way that is super easy to get any tool that you want to use in your pipeline, kubectl, maven, um, shell script, build that, like any utility that you want to use, you can use it there. And let's deploy the application and see it. Um, let me move this up here. So we deployed the same concept as the build task, but I should have two tasks now, the build and deploy one. So now you have a build and deploy tasks. Um, if I want to describe it, then I can describe it here. And the same thing, it takes some input parameters, the task of Tekton. Uh, it does some steps. In this case, it's going to do a git clone, but it's going to run kubectl, not like the other one. So this is uh, the second step, our second task, uh, sorry, that I'm going to run in, in order in a minute or so. So if we want to test it, uh, let's run it. Uh, this is the YAML file that is located in the repo. I can show the repo again. Uh, there's a folder called knative service.yaml. And that's basically, this is the, the one that I want to deploy into my, my application. Um, so let me see. Uh, let me start that um, one. And this, the same, the same deal. Uh, it should uh, start pods and start the containers that run this this task uh, with a task run. So a task run corresponds to one container. So that was super, super fast. Uh, in this case, um, I made uh, that YAML has a different uh, information. So we'll set it, it, we'll it in a minute. Um, so now if I do knative service list demo, this is this is the, the, the knative service that got deployed 18 seconds ago. So uh, the Tekton was able to take the um, the YAML file, update the YAML file, and then um, deploy the application, and it should be uh, up and live. Uh, I'm not going to call it again because we already saw a Knative demo. What we want to show next is I have two tasks, the build task and the deploy task. So now I want to run build and then deploy. And if I want to compose that, I can compose that into a pipeline. So that's what we're going to look right now, uh, the, the pipeline in Tekton. So the, uh, the pipeline, you, again, you define it with YAML. You take the YAML file and define it, like what are the inputs for this pipeline that is going to run the two tasks? 
The first task is going to be the build task and the second task is going to run is the deploy task. And as you can see here, this one will wait for the build task to be done. So, um, but you can configure pipelines to run sequentially in parallel, um, uh, the task within the pipeline, sorry, I meant uh, tasks. And uh, the parameters are going to be passed to the pipeline. So I want to deploy that pipeline. I can take it and then apply this YAML. And my pipeline should be there if I want to list it with the Connect on CLI. I can just list it here. And this is my pipeline. No status because I haven't run a pipeline yet. Uh, to run a pipeline, that will be the next step. Uh, if I want to describe it, I can run Tecton uh, Describe. As you can see, it will take certain parameters. I don't, I'm not passing other parameters. Some of them are default. But the ones that I could be reusable is if I have a, a uh, I can use this pipeline to deploy a Java application, a Go application, uh, or an application or multiple Node.js applications that are in different folders. Or it could be in a different, totally different Git repo, uh, for example. Uh, that I want to deploy. It doesn't have to be the same. Everything doesn't have to be in the same repo. As a best practice, everything should not be in the same repo. You should have separation of concerns of source code and code for your microservices versus your ops and versus your pipelines. So in this case, this is the pipeline. And if we want to start it, um, we can uh, run the, C the Tecton CLI. You can create a pipeline run, but the CLI is a shortcut to get that pipeline run created. I'm going to start it. And, and that's basically, I'm passing two, two input parameters. I'm passing the image um, uh, that I want to apply, uh, the same uh, same image as I did before, and then the repo, the repository that we want to deploy. Like I said, this could be a different repo. It doesn't have to be the same. For demo purposes, I'm putting everything in the same repository. So it's easy to follow if you sit down and go through this tutorial. Um, step by step, I'm actually reading versus me telling you um, you will follow along and find everything in one in one place. So in this case, it's doing the, the Tecton build. Remember, it's taking the source code con and, and packaging it into a container image and, and then pushing it to um, Docker Hub. So it looks like it's making some progress uh, building the image and now it's pushed the image uh, to, to the container registry. Uh, which, like I said, I'm using Docker Hub, but you could be using the internal registry, like for example, OpenShift comes from internal registry, or you can be using um, uh, any cloud provider provides container registry. IBM provides a container registry that you can use, um, and also it can scan your images for security problems as you push images, and then even block you from deploying an application uh, that has security issues uh, in the image or the base image not necessarily your code. So in this case, it did the two tasks. Um, the first task was build, um, and then the second one was called, sorry, build, and then the second one was called deploy with two steps, uh, the git clone and apply. So it applied my YAML, and if I want to see uh, like the status of um, that, I can, I can list the pipeline run. So a pipeline run was created by the command. Um, it ran the pipeline called pipeline uh, build deploy, as you can see here, these are the status of those two tasks. I can also show you in the Tecton um, uh, UI or dashboard, um, OpenShift comes with the pipeline, uh, with a sorry, with a UI embedded that shows you similar information as the status of your pipeline. This is just an open source project just to uh, navigate, make it easy to navigate um, if, if you want to see a UI. And so with that said, uh, we can also see our, our image uh, application is still there uh, and it got deployed. If I want to run it, now I'm deploying with a pipeline. Instead of deploying two separate things, build and then deploy, I'm taking pipelines and doing a build and deploy on this application. So let's run it um, and it should print uh, a message. So as you can see, now it says my first service application, uh, Open Source Summit, uh, North America 2020. And, and some emoji. So that's the, the version that is uh, that I showed a minute ago uh, in the YAML file here. That's the information that is uh, was, was there and was not the original um, uh, image. Um, so with that, um, that's, that's um, the pipeline. And lastly, if I have a few minutes, let me show you uh, an example of 
automating this from Git because we don't want to run all these things uh, manually. So for that, what we need to do is use tech, uh, we could use Tekton to create some of the resources that will handle a, a GitHub sending us a, a trigger. So we're going to install um, um, the Tekton trigger component. Uh, this is that's, this is a, 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 a different component. It's, it's not based with Tekton, but um, as a core, want to be, want, we want to keep the core uh, small. So the triggers are, are um, a sub project of the Tekton um, open source project. And next we want to create a, a trigger template. So this template is going to be used as a template to create resources. So anytime a, a new change happens in Git, I want to create a pipeline run. Um, and I can put the specification here. It's like, which pipeline do you want to run? What is the service account? And then what are the parameters you want to pass? So in this case, I'm going to pass the, the URL of the Git, the revision, and probably an image tag. And then we can deploy the, the template uh, with kubectl, and that will create the template. The second one is the trigger uh, trigger binding. The trigger binding, what it does is when that request HTTP request comes in, I want to extract information um, from it. So this is binding is reusable across multiple use cases. It's not specific to this pipeline. So I'm going to um, this is the YAML file that is going to take the body of the HTTP request, extract the commit, extract the repo URL. And then I'm using a nifty extension that it says, take the, the, the chasm and then give me the seven characters. I'm going to show that in a minute, how that works in the event listener. So we're going to use the um, kubectl to apply the trigger binding for that. So I created the, um, the template and the binding uh, using uh, Tekton triggers. So after the binding is created, we created the template and we created the binding. Now, um, but that doesn't run any pods. That's just definition of resources sitting there um, for configuration only. Um, now what we need to do is uh, create a trigger event listener. And this is a way you can create your web server or anything, but it, this is a composable framework in Tekton that we can use uh, defined in YAML have uh, basically given instructions like create a small deployment uh, that would handle those HTTP requests coming from Git. And then what do I do with them? So the idea is that this event listener will create that pod that listens, um, uses a service to listen for HTTP requests coming from Git. And then we will put the two things together, the binding and the template. So it will take the binding, extract the information from the HTTP request, and then instantiate the pipeline around using the template. Uh, the interceptor is something that is, you can program into doing some filters and overlays. In this case, I'm showing an example of a filter that I want to only handle a push request. So from Git, you can receive uh, events like a new comment, a new pull request. I just want to know that it's push specifically to the main repository. Uh, if there's other, repo sorry, main branch, not other branches. So if we have other branches making changes, I, don't want, I want to ignore them. And then lastly, this is the, the nifty thing I was saying. I want to just track the seven uh, first character of that Git hash because I'm going to use it as a Git tag, uh, sorry, as a image tag. Uh, so that way every image that gets created and I, I can associate it with a Git change uh, with the first character instead of the whole thing. And that looks even better. Um, so with that, let's create the uh, Tekton trigger listener and that should start a pod uh, with a service. So if we want to see the pod and the and the service that I got created. So this will consume, uh, let me see in a minute. Let me see the deployment should be there. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Um, looks like something happened. So if we run the command uh, again, we should see a pod running. Uh, in this case, it's a deployment. I can do k get pods, uh, grep for l dash cicd because that was the name of the listener and I have one pod running. So this started a pod that's going to start receiving that is ready to receive those HTTP requests uh, from Git. Uh, so that's what's going to, we're going to look at next is um, getting that request into, into this pod. Uh, so for that, uh, we are going to use, um, we need to get the URL. Um, in this case, I'm using a, a cluster that doesn't have an application load balancer. Um, 
uh, because it's a free cluster uh, in IBM, but if you're using the standard cluster, we have an application on our balancer, ingress, all those type of standards. I'm using kind of a development, uh, very one node uh, cluster. So I'm going to configure with the node port. This way um, I'm able to expose the service to a node port and the external IP address. So talking about that, the next command is going to, again, grab the external IP I've been using for the dashboards for the Knative service and then extract the node port that I got assigned. And then now I have a URL that I can send a, a, and I can give to Git to send those triggers uh, for Git webhook. Um, take into account that this is HTTP. In real products or production, you want to use HTTPS. So I put a, I put a big warning here that you should configure it with, um, uh, for example, the IBM application load balancer and TLS termination or OpenShift using routes. Um, so take into account that this is HTTP and everything that goes off the wire is open. There's no security uh, on it. So the, what you need to do is, uh, and you can do it programmatically. This is uh, what in the setup um, environment. You can set up an access token, then programmatically add it. I'm going to show the UI on how to do it and explain it here. So if we go back to our repository, I can go to the main repository and to do it on this, um, go to settings um, and you can, it will be different for every um, Git provider. It could be a private Git provider, commercial one, uh, like the GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, um, op, uh, IBM has a, a, a Git service um, that you can use. It has a free tier uh, and also those uh, webhooks. I have a tutorial on using the DevOps and using that also. That's a different tutorial that I have uh, in one of my websites in cloudnative101.dev. Um, let me wait a second here for the page to load. So the page loaded and you want to go to webhooks. Um, so I don't have any webhooks here. I'm going to be adding a new webhook. Uh, I'm going to put that URL there. So this is where I want Git to send uh, the request. So let me copy this uh, into here and then change it to application JSON. This, uh, this event listener is expecting application JSON, not, not XML, uh, not form. Um, and the secret uh, is also something that you can configure. Tecton has an interceptor that can be used to uh, validate that this uh, Git uh, event is, is signed uh, and coming from GitHub and not a trusted source. I'm not going to show that because this is a demo kind of tutorial just to learning, but take a look at the documentation on interceptors and using for GitLab or GitHub how to uh, those are signed. I can select uh, push event. Uh, I'm going to select push event give it default, or I can send uh, send me everything comments, um, pull pull requests, creating of a tag, um, and my 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 trigger um, event listener. As you saw, my interceptor will not ignore them. But in this case, just use the default, and that's uh, a simple, a simple thing to do. This green check mark means that the GitHub did a ping to my service. So if you don't see a, a green check mark here, there's something wrong with your event listener or the route um, to your event listener. So with that, I have my uh, webhook done, and I can make a change um, and trigger the the uh, the pipeline. So this is where it gets excited <laughs> uh, to the, all, all this point. I can go in here um, and I make a change to my Git. I can do it from my uh, code editor or I can do it from the web browser. It doesn't matter where, where I, do it, uh, I do it from. Um, so I'm going to um, edit something about my application. I could be editing the, the Node.js or I could be editing the YAML file. Uh, so I'm going to edit the, the YAML file. So I'm going to uh, edit here, uh, make a bit bigger. Um, and I'm going to change the message instead of my fir first service app, at, uh, North America, I can say, um, thank you for assisting at this tutorial or thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, and then, um, update the K native, K native service. Uh, this is for demo purposes. I can create a branch, review it, merge it into master, uh, but I'm going to commit directly in there. And then I'm going to um, watch uh, what happens. So 
uh, at this point, um, there's a pipeline should be running. And if I go here and do the last log, um, the logs will just start coming in. If I check the pipeline, that should be a status. So you see the circle here, that pipeline is running. Uh, if I click on it, uh, it's running my pipeline. I can see the status. I can see more details um, about the pipeline. It's already the, the, the clone is doing the, the build image. Um, and it will take about a, a, a minute uh, to be done. And then uh, we will be able to describe the, the pipeline uh, when, when it's done. So now our application is done. The uh, logs are done and then the, the task is completed and I have a status that everything got deployed. Um, I can test it to see if it's, if it's ready. Yeah, and it says, thank you for, for watching. Uh, uh, let me run it again so to test that here. Uh, and I can even uh, go to uh, the application here and call it, uh, what do we call it, demo? uh demo and yeah thank you thank you for watching and i'll be answering questions if you're watching live uh on the chat or i think they will put me live uh or uh if you're watching this recording probably in in, in youtube go ahead and reach out to me in my in my twitter handle um and also open an issue in the github issue in the github repo if you find a problem or you have suggestions for the tutorial and I appreciate it and this makes the community better. So thank you. I think we're live. Cool. So we are live. Um, I think we have like five minutes to take um questions um we have a couple of them already in the in the system uh one of them is around um render.com packages an app into a container and provides containers urls and the client code which consumes the app called uh, case ml models in package does tecton provide similar service on openshift flavor of kubernetes Yes, Tecton um, is supported on any Kubernetes system, and particularly on OpenShift, there's an operator supported by Red Hat called the Pipeline Operator. Um, we, um, we use it in IBM. We also have OpenShift as a service, um, and it's supported in OpenShift in Kubernetes. Um, in terms of render.com, I'm not familiar with it, but Tecton is a composable um, automation API, uh, so it, it runs um, shell scripts um, and it basically you're running uh, containers. So it's a serverless um, automation tool. So um, when things need to run, they run and they, they stop so you don't consume a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of resources. So um, I'm not familiar with render.com, but Tecton can be used for containers or it could be used for automation. For example, you want to build all the type of software uh, like npm packages or Maven uh, jar files, uh, it can be used for that. The same similar way as you can think of, of Jenkins, but uh, Tecton uses that composable API, so it can be used for Kubernetes. Also in IBM Cloud, we have a uh, Tecton as a service, so you don't have to have a cluster. We take your Tecton YAML files and we run them for you, so um, you don't have to manage Kubernetes to run Tecton, and that becomes an API. Um, another question. Um, we have one saying that Istio uh, and Knative, I didn't see you running Istio. Um, uh, Knative now um, supports more than Istio. Istio is the networking layer. So Knative programs the network, networking layer. So I use Courier, which is, is a more lighter way of uh, just to run certain things of that network networking layer. Then if you want more advanced use cases, then you may uh, use Istio. But Istio is now is not a hard requirement. You can use Contour. You can use Glue, other um, service mesh or networking layers. I use Courier because um, that's kind of light, lightweight, also supported by Red Hat, and it comes with, with OpenShift. Um, more questions. I think I saw people saying that they liked the session. Oh, uh, there's another question saying, 
is the video uh, available to download. Um, it, it, I don't know if it's going to be available to download. I believe it's going to be posted in the YouTube Linux Foundation uh, at some point um, in the future. So all the, all the videos like, like last year, they should be in the Linux Foundation YouTube channel um, later. Uh, on this platform for you, yeah, and you and on this platform also. So you'll be seeing the interaction of of also on this platform. So it will be available in both places. Um, any more questions? Uh, oh, uh, there's something here. Um, see something about multi-tenant. If there's a multi-tenant dashboard solution, so um, in terms of 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 Tekton. Um, that dashboard that I show is a web UI, I believe it's in React.js. So um, you can configure it. Um, I don't know that much of the, of the details for it, but Tekton is uh, built and tested to be multi-tenant. I believe um, you, can, you can have it in that way. But for the most part, it's an automation piece. Um, so the multi-tenant comes from so the service, like, service account. So, um, for example, a namespace will have a service account and your pipelines will run with that service account. And then it depends what permissions you give that service account to do. Uh, so for example, if that service account can only touch, um, read certain namespaces, but not write or deploy to certain namespaces, but not others. Then that's a way you can manage kind of the, the multi-tenant in Kubernetes by, by the service account and giving the, the uh, role bindings and RBAC. Um, so that you can achieve that in terms of, of Tekton is through the, the service account. Let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, people said that they liked the session. Um, I don't know how the video looked like, but uh, hopefully that it looked okay on the other side. Um, I think that's, this, that's it. I have another question. Uh, I mentioned like, yeah, um, if you're doing open source development and maybe you have a, um, I did, I, I, I was an open source committer, so there was always difficult to find build systems uh, for free uh, because you always have to have VMs running all the time to run build systems. So Tekton is, could be a possibility of running that serverless. So, um, and also isolating based on containers. So if you're running an, an, op an open source project, uh, take a look at, at using Tekton as a way of having serverless uh, builds. So that way you can run more builds um, um, on demand and being and being serverless in in, in that aspect, um, and then you don't have to burn CPUs and and memory. And for that matter, Knative is also serverless. So you have applications that um, are not running or not consuming that much uh, resources. They just just go to zero, so they don't have to be running all the time. How are we doing with time and the questions? Uh, uh, people say that the, the sometimes the, the resolution of the fonts didn't came that well, uh, but um, um, but having the Git repo help dramatically. Yeah, so the, the Git repo is available. You can sit down and go through it. Uh, I recently updated it uh, with Minikube. Uh, so you can test it on Minikube. Um, um, the, the, Trigger GitHub, it's kind of tricky to do. You can do it with Tonomi or Inlets. I have instructions there. I also have a short version, maybe a lighter version of the tutorial on Karakora. So you can try that or try the one that I, I did with the free cluster in IBM. Um, I also put a videos on how to get a free cluster in IBM for demo purposes. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're almost about um, out of time, and we can continue the conversation in in Slack. Um, so we'll direct everyone to Slack uh, with a broadcast message uh, once just uh, I say goodbye. So I think that was the last question. Uh, reach me in Twitter. Uh, also, I can do similar talk or more advanced talk in Twitch, um, or um, I think a K Native is planning a meetup, or I can do a similar talk uh, or. Uh, do the tutorial in GitHub. Um, I put all the instructions in there step by step. If you have issues, open open, open an issue, or or now uh, we can Slack um, on Slack. So I think we're we're good to broadcast the typical message. <laughs>